Hi and welcome back to my insect friendly garden. It's April, it's a beautiful month, one of my favourite times of year. Spring is springing, the birds are singing, the chiff chaffs chiff chaffing, bees are buzzing about, the apple trees are all in blossom. It's all happening, it's, it's just lovely. One of those days when it's nice to be alive. Oh, it's never a bad day to be alive, but anyway. Um, where was I? So, come with me and I'll give you some ideas for uh, plants you might stick in your garden to give uh, bees and other insects some food at this time of year. Come with me. April's pretty much peak flowering for my apple trees. And look at this, they're just buzzing, mainly with honeybees at the moment, quite a few mason bees, a few other solitaries. Whole trees just alive. This tree's Discovery, uh, one of the early dessert apples, really lovely red apples. Um, but elsewhere in the garden, I've got dozens of other apples in full flower. Absolutely beautiful. There's a little nomada cuckoo bee, rather gorgeous little wasp-like bee, just having a drink of nectar there, getting its head really stuck in. I think we can see it better this way, there we go. Very handsome little bee. Pear trees are almost finished flowering. This is the last one to be in full flower. This is a, a peri pear, so for making peri rather than eating, called Moorcroft. Beautiful blossom. While the pears are just finishing, the cherries are just coming into blossom. Bees haven't yet discovered this one. This is Stella. Nice dessert cherry. This is gooseberry, most unimpressive flowers. These little, little things here don't bother producing colourful petals at all, but uh, they seem to attract bumblebees. There was an early bumblebee here a second ago. Often get tawny mining bees on my gooseberries and black currants and red currants and so on. Very kind of them to do the pollination. This is Iberian comfrey, a little patch. It started flowering last month, but it's still going strong. And there's a, a worker early bumblebee collecting pollen over there. There she is. Nice little pollen balls on her legs there. Really useful plant for shady or part shade. It just spreads nice ground cover, keeps the weeds down. And the bees love it. April's peak time for dandelion flowering. It's 
worth not cutting your lawn at this time of year to let them all uh, do their thing. Daisies as well. Daisies aren't super attractive to insects, but lovely, aren't they? Mixed up with the dandelions. Often see red-tailed bumblebees on dandelions. They seem to have a preference for yellow flowers, which is a bit different to most other bumbles. Well, oh, the ducks are going in my greenhouse. I better go and shoo them out. Speedwell is also a lovely little wildflower. I never sow it, but it creeps around the garden. Some people think it's, a, it's regarded as a weed, but uh, how could you call that a weed? Beautiful. It's saucy. It's good ground cover. It just spreads around really low to the ground. It doesn't compete with any any other plants really because it's so low growing. And uh, isn't that gorgeous? This is cherry laurel, big shrub often used in hedging. But if you let it flower, it's really popular with bees. She, this is a very tired looking queen early bumblebee. Should have workers by now, she must have woken up late this spring or something. Maybe things have gone wrong for her. Oh, she's off. Honesty is a nice plant to grow. It's a cabbage family. You see the four petals, which is very distinctive of cabbage family. Four petals in a cross gives them the old name of cruciferae, or now brassicaceae, the brassicas. Anyway, um, it's uh, sometimes used as a food plant by orange tip butterflies, which are absolutely gorgeous. And for that reason alone, it's worth growing. It's a biennial, but it, uh, it seeds itself quite happily if you leave it. This is yellow archangel, dead nettle family. Well, mint family actually, but related to dead nettles. Square stems, if you run them between your fingers, you can, very characteristic of the mint family. But, uh, these are loved by Common Carter Queens, really good source of nectar for them. And a nice plant for a shady spot, happily grows under trees or hedge bottoms and spreads itself around. I'm hopefully going to encourage an enormous patch of this. Rhododendrons, just coming into flower. Depending on which species or variety you grow, they can go right through the spring into summer. But most of them peak in May and June. Really popular with bumblebees and that's a, a red mason bee here. Drinking the nectar. Having a good old drink in there. The Bee Hotel, absolutely buzzing with life at the moment. It's peak mason bee season, mostly uh, red mason bees, but we've got some blue mason bees out early. Gorgeous to see them all buzzing around. Got a whole range of different bee hotels, but they all seem to be working. A lot of the plants in flower are ones that started in March but are still going. Uh, this is obviously rosemary. Lovely kitchen herb.
this is a kind of Japanese quince called Cedo quince. It's, um, has yet to produce fruit, but it's really covered in these lovely blossom. And supposedly the fruits are good to eat, sometimes called Serbian lemons. I look forward to trying them. Sycamores and other aces can be surprisingly good forage for bees of a wide range of types. You see bumblebees, solitary bees and so on. Um, the flowers, a bit like gooseberry, very unimpressive. Yeah, there's a little hoverfly just came in. Um, but uh, seemed to manage to attract uh, insects well enough. If we just look up along the side of this Acer, let's see how many insects there are buzzing around. Lots of them hoverflies. So much life. There's a Helophilus hoverfly, one of the species that lays its eggs in hoverfly lagoons, I believe. Often called the tiger stripe or tiger hoverfly, or sometimes called the footballer. It looks a bit like it's wearing a yellow and black striped jersey. This handsome beast is a queen hornet, the native species, not the invasive one from China. Fantastic beast if ever I saw one. Perhaps can't tell how big it is, but it's big, I can assure you. Really magnificent insects, I'll see how close I can get without frightening her off. People are terrified of these things, but they're actually really docile. I don't know anyone who can genuinely claim to have been stung by one. I imagine it might hurt. But uh, they really keep out of the way of people whenever they possibly can. Glorious insects. How'd you get, Geoffrey? I'm going this way. You're not impressing anybody. No, we don't want to see your bottom. Out of the way. Bluebells, of course, one of our best known native wildflowers. Lovely garden plants too. They don't see too many pollinators on them, but they're pretty popular with queen garden bumblebees, which have a really long tongue, which they need for visiting bluebells. Because they're not a particularly common or abundant species, you don't tend to see much visiting bluebells unless you're patient. But uh, Worth squeezing a few in because they'll happily grow in a shady spot where not much else would thrive and they're just beautiful. This is Ceanothus or Californian lilac. Uh, this particular one is Ceanothus trewithin blue. They normally Ceanothus flower in May or June and are pretty attractive to, to bees. But this particular variety, unfortunately I planted it and I wish I hadn't, because I've never seen a damned insect on it. Oh well, looks pretty. This is uh, ground ivy with a bee fly on it. Gotta love a bee fly. The ground ivy is a member of the mint family. creeps around in kind of woodland edges, hedgerow bottoms, coming out of a hedge on the edge of my lawn here. And uh, it's a very good nectar rich, low growing plant. Not particularly spectacular, but uh, liked by some of our longer tongued bees. It's an absolute favourite food of hairy footed flower bees amongst others. 
bee flies, in case you didn't know, are parasites of uh, solitary bees. They fire their eggs into the nests of solitary bees by flicking them with their legs while hovering outside. And then their offspring are um, parasitic on the bee. A bit naughty, you might think, but you can't really hold it against them, can you? Fantastic creatures. Beautiful, common butterfly. Come out of hibernation recently. So it's been an adult since last summer. Just warming itself up in the spring sunshine, and off, off it goes. Forget me not, of course. Beautiful little annual weedy plant pops up on its own. I never sow it, but it's always very, very welcome. Not the most attractive plant to bees, but you get a steady flow of mainly little solitary bees and the odd hoverfly. Not normally a plant I'd associate with April at all, but uh, given this weirdly warm year we're having, uh, my red campions are just coming into flower. Aren't they beautiful? Native wildflower. This one's a male, so campions are either male or female, which is unlike most plants, which are, tend to be hermaphrodites. Um, so only the female plants produce seed, of course. Look at this little beauty. You'll have to forgive the sound of my sprinkler in the background. Hopefully you can hear me. This is a holly blue butterfly just drinking from the, the mud where I've just been watering some plants. Beautiful little spring butterfly. Shame they never open their wings because of the top sides are a gorgeous kind of pale blue with black fringes, but uh, you hardly ever see them. Maybe they're shy. This is borage, very commonly grown and easy to grow, um, annual, or well, you can sow it late in the year for flowering the next year, which is what I've done here. And uh, really popular with bumblebees, honeybees, um, a few hoverflies occasionally. It's um, also really useful in salads, so you can. Oh, doesn't look so beautiful. Let me try another one. Okay, theoretically, you can pick off the petals. There we go. You need to get rid of the hairy sepals. And you can sprinkle it on salads. They look beautiful. You can eat them. And they taste quite sweet. I'm just going to eat this one. Hmm. Not bad at all. You can taste the nectar. It's a common carder on the, uh, the geranium. It's just starting to come out. There are lots of different uh, uh, varieties of perennial hardy geraniums, not to be confused with pelagoniums, sometimes called geraniums. But uh, almost all of them are really good for bees. She's loving it. I think she's probably a queen from the size of the Beautiful girl. Very busy. So there you have it. Another exciting tour of my garden <laughs> draws to a close. Um, I'll be back in a week or two with a lawn safari, which is going to be very, very exciting. You just watch this space. Until then, uh, have fun and happy bee gardening. Take care.